Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me be the first. Just wish each and every one of you a happy Resurrection Day. Today, the message that will be coming forth out of a Spring of Water Christian Assemblies entitled, The Benefits of the Resurrection. Notice I didn't say the benefits of Easter. Because the benefits of Easter, you ask a child, what is Easter all about? They'll tell you the Easter bunny. Easter hunt, the Easter egg, the Easter dress, the Easter basket, all of that to a child and to some adults. That's the benefit of Easter. But we're going to the true meaning of what today is. It's not about Easter. It's about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blessings that we have, the benefits that God has awarded us to the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ, how he conquered sin, death, and the grave. And that's the benefit right there. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God who has given us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The power of sin is broken. Praise the name of the Lord. And so that my brothers and sisters, are some of the benefits of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Go with me now into the service as I share with you further benefits of the resurrection. God bless you.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart just rolled away. It was there by faith. Hallelujah. I received my sight and now Praise God. Remain standing. Re remain standing. Just want to take you back to that moment in time when life made sense. When life was no longer a wasted dream. A day that gives meaning to why we're celebrating today. Let's go back to where it all happened. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 through 6. Matthew 28 1 through 6. This is the occasion. This is the miracle that brought hope to all humanity. This is the center of what we believe and in whom we believe. Our faith hinges on what happened on this day. Children remember this passage. It's not about an Easter bunny. It's about the resurrection of our Lord. I said it's about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on, give him a hand clap in this place today. Lift up his name in this place today. And we have the Bible account, the gospel account. Read aloud with me. In the end of the Sabbath, read aloud church, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Somebody shout, He's risen! Lift your hands, he is risen. Lift your hands and shout, he is risen. Christ the Lord is risen. He's risen today, church. Risen forevermore. We serve a risen Savior. 
He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of goodness and I hear his voice of cheer. And whenever I need him, I said whenever I need him, I said whenever I need him, do you need the Lord? Do you need the Lord? He is risen. He is here. Somebody say he is here. Somebody say he's here. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Come on, clap your hands now. And let's celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Just want to thank you. As we go now to your word, we just pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just bless us and minister to us in Jesus' mighty and most precious name. Praise the Lord. I want to invite Pastor Karen to come, and she's going to bless us.
you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame in a love you came and gave. the world today, people are celebrating Easter. Many of you here today and those of you who make up our virtual church, I'm sure by now you have received an Easter card. Let me see your hand if you've received an Easter card. Let me see your hand. Somebody mailed you an Easter card? Hmm? Nobody want to admit it? Well, I got, I got, oh yeah, come on, lift the hand high. Somebody mailed you an Easter card? I got one. All right, well, maybe. How many of you bought Easter cards? I'll do it the other way. Come on, raise your hand now. How many of you mailed an Easter card? Yes. Yes. And I'm not condemning you for that. Amen? Hallelujah. But I want you to know that this day has less to do with those Easter cards than you may think. 
for some folks, Easter is all about the bunny. Are you saved? <laughs> Amen. Can you imagine? That's what Easter means to a lot of children. The bunny. Amen. To, to a lot of kids, Easter is a great day. You know why? Oh, man. They're going to go for the Easter egg. They're going to hunt for it. Amen? Am I right? And then we have the Easter basket with the candy. Amen? And so just imagine to little children, this is what they think about Easter. And unfortunately, a lot of adults, this is all they know about Easter. The benefit of Easter, the card, the bunny, the candy, the Easter dinner. And the Easter dress. I'm not going to ask you to stand, but I know somebody went out and bought a nice outfit for today because it's Easter. Amen? And brothers, you're not off the hook because you went out and matched that, bought that shirt and bought that tie to match it up. Amen? Who's wouldn't surprise if I ran into some of you in the store. Because Easter is coming. And I did run into a few of you in the store, but I won't call your name out on national television. Amen. But you know what? That, that, that's all right. But, but God wants you to understand that the benefits of Easter. Can you come down now? He just laid three eggs. But God wants you to know that this day means more than that. This is what it means to millions of people across the world today. Amen? Uh, to little children, those are the benefits of Easter. And so I don't want to call this day Easter. I want us to call it Resurrection Day. And the message that God has laid on my heart is entitled, The Benefits of the Resurrection Day. You see, the benefits of Easter cannot compare to the benefits of the Resurrection Day. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen? Because... What happened on this day is at the center of what we believe as born again believers. Amen? The benefit, the benefits of the resurrection day. Now, if you do a little bit of research, you will find out that Easter. The name, the word Easter, E-A-S-T-E-R, that it, it, there was another celebration going on at the time. And that was spelled E-O-S-T-E-R. It was the celebration of a pagan goddess. And somehow the, the, the Catholic Church brought the word Easter to replace the resurrection day. And it started with the Catholic Church, and it passed down to, to you. And so to, today, to you, is Easter. And some will say, well, Easter is in the Bible. Easter appears once in the Bible. But it did not describe the resurrection of our Lord. 
Can you put Acts chapter 12, 1 through 11 on the board? So I just want to just um, impart some knowledge unto you this morning so that you will know that uh, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is really what this day is all about, more about than about Easter. So the one occasion we had in Scripture, I'll read it for you. It says in Acts chapter 12, this is, so let me just paraphrase, it had to do with Peter being thrown into prison. Amen? The one occasion you see the word Easter, it described what was happening on a particular day called Easter. Amen? And so the Bible says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, meaning Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quart, quaternions, which multitude of soldiers, to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Amen? So it was describing this time when Peter was thrown into prison. You got me? It's not equated with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we read about the resurrection, so here's what happened on Resurrection Day. So that's what happened on the day Peter was thrown into jail by Herod. You got it? Now, Resurrection Day is completely different from that. Here's what happened on Resurrection Day. After the Sabbath at dawn, Matthew 28, 1 through 10, read with me. We read it a little bit earlier, Matthew 28, 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. So on resurrection day, when they went to the grave or the tomb of Jesus, there was no one in it. The stone was rolled away. You got it? His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen or he has resurrected. Are you with me? He's not here. He has resurrected. Just as he said, come and see the place where he he lay. The resurrection had to do with an empty tomb that once, uh, where, where once laid the body of Jesus. Amen. For three days, on the third day, he rose triumphantly from the grave. On the third day, he rose triumphantly from the grave. And so we need to understand that there's a big difference between the resurrection day, amen, between what this day is and what the world called it. And I think the church needs to correct their mistake. Today is resurrection day. Everybody say happy resurrection day. Come on now, as if you understand what I'm saying. Happy Resurrection Day. The word Easter appeared once in Scripture when Peter was thrown into jail. But the resurrection appears 41 times in Scripture. Amen? And it's all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is risen just as he said he would. Amen? And because he rose from the grave, and I'm going to tie this message up now, we have some benefits that I want to share with you. 
And Easter cannot provide you with these benefits. So I want you to go with me now to Romans chapter 6. Let's put that on the overhead. And we're going to put this message together. You're going to go home and you're going to have your resurrection dinner real soon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. So let's put that on the overhead. The benefits of the resurrection. So we know the benefits of Easter. I said the bunny, the egg hunt, the dress, the hat. The hat. The hat. <laughs> My wife picked one out today and I matched her up, man. The hat. <laughs> Amen. It's all right to wear the hat. As long as you know that there's more to this day than your outfit. Amen. It's more than the candies. And the family get together. Praise the Lord. The benefits of the resurrection. So can you put it on the overhead? Read with me aloud. If you read with me, we're going to wrap this message up. Read aloud. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may be about? So the resurrection has a lot to do with the sin problem of man. Are you with me? You know, the, the early folks, they were keep sinning. So, and, and it seems as if the grace of God just had to be poured out over and over and over again. So the Apostle Paul says, you know, uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Next verse. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. How shall we who are dead to sin See, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, one of the benefits of it. We are dead to sin. Amen? We are dead to sin. Hallelujah. In other words, sin is dead as far as we're concerned. And sin leads to death. Don't get me wrong. Amen? But saying we're dead to sin means it doesn't affect us born-again believers. Say amen, somebody. So the resurrection means that, you know what? You know, Satan can bring on all that he wants to throw against us. Amen? And if you do fall into sin, you're not destroyed by it. Say amen, somebody. Amen? So it's almost like saying you're immune to sin. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Praise his name. Yes. And then he goes on, and he says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So when you got baptized, we were baptized into his death. Something happened at baptism. And that's why baptism is so important. When you go down in the waters, Christ went down in the bowels of the earth. So too do you and I, we go down, dead to sin. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. But we don't stay there, church. Say amen, somebody. Lift your hand if you're here today. I've accepted Jesus Christ, but I've not yet been baptized. Pastor, I would love to get baptized. I want to go all the way with Jesus. Won't you stand today? I'm going to make an appeal. Amen. You've been putting it off, and God has been speaking to your heart. We want to make that possible for you. Is there anyone? We see one. Is anyone? Anyone? All right, we're going to move on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, that we were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Amen? So, we're going to die, church. 
You see, some folks want the resurrection without the death. Huh? Pastor, tell me about going to heaven. Tell me about heaven. Help me imagine heaven. And you need to imagine, but understand that unless Christ comes, we're all going to die. But this day has significant meaning that we're not dead in our trespasses and sins. Say amen, somebody. That the grave cannot hold us. The good news of the resurrection, that, the, that, that even though we go down in the grave, the grave does not dictate where we spend eternity. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place today. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. One of the benefits of the resurrection is that we shall walk in the newness of life. Say amen, somebody. The outward man may perish, but the inward man remains alive. Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Stay with me now. We walk in the newness of life. It's not about the bunny. The bunny can't do that for you. Eat the candy, but it means nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. And isn't it sad that that's all some people know about this day? The bunny, the candy, the Easter egg hunt, the getting dressed up. Listen, the majority of the world, that's all they know about this day. But God wants to correct that for you today. So just bear with me a little bit longer. Hallelujah. So the benefit of the resurrection, number one, we have the promise of a new life. We have the promise of a new life. Hallelujah. As Christ was resurrected, so too shall we be resurrected. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Number three, look at verse seven. Amen. We are no longer a slave to sin, church. Somebody needs to tell the Lord, thank you. Because you know what? I've done some terrible things in my life. Sin is no joke. Sin is never pleasant. Don't ever think that your lie was just a little lie in the sight of God. Your cheating was just a little mistake in the sight of God. It's sin. You did your taxes. Hello. You're single, not married. And you don't have six children, you have none. my taxes. It don't mean nothing. I'm just trying to get a bigger return. We're no longer a slave to sin. Verse 7, read that with me. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Do you understand that? The benefits of the resurrection. Can you just give us a verse of that song, Sister Christina? Brother Mondi, no longer a slave to sin. Praise God. Just a verse or two. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just come and stand in the middle. Did you, I, want, I want this to register with you. The resurrection, one of the benefits is... You're no longer a slave to sin. Sin does not define you. Are you with me? You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. 
till all my fears are gone. For I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. You have chosen me from my mother's womb. Your love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave of fear, for I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to for I am a child of God. Amen, amen. Amen. Sin brings fear. Amen. Sin brings death. But through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, because of the resurrection of our Lord, we're no longer a slave to sin. We're no longer a slave to the fear of sin. Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand clap in here today. Thank you, Brother Mondi. Thank you, Sister Christina. Amen. The benefits of the resurrection. Listen, write this down. We live forever with Christ. Amen. We live forever with Christ. Let's look at verse 8. Let's read it aloud. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Did you hear that? Christ died. He lives forever with his saints to reign. Amen. And we too live forever with him. Another benefit of, uh, hallelujah, the resurrection is that we are victorious over sin and death, and the grave. Go with me to Romans 6 and 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When he conquered sin, death, and the grave, we too conquered sin, death, and the grave. When he rose triumphantly and victoriously from the grave, it means that we're going to rise triumphantly and victoriously over the grave. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God who has given us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The resurrection is about victory. The resurrection says that we are more than conquerors to him who loved us and gave his life for us. The, the, the resurrection, the benefits of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John eleven twenty five, 25, upon the death of Lazarus, Speaking to his sisters, Mary and Martha, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Listen, because of the resurrection, we have everlasting life. The benefit of the resurrection, we have everlasting life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And because we believe in him, accepted him as Lord and Savior, baptized in him, in water and in the spirit. Hallelujah. We too shall have everlasting life. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord a hand clap today. Touchdown. Somebody say touchdown. 
Somebody said touchdown. Game's over. We win. We win. Because of the resurrection, we win. Re remain standing. Hallelujah. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we operate in resurrection power. Did you hear that? Philippians 3.10. Paul says, I want to know him, meaning Jesus. Amen. I want to know the power of his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ empowers us. Did you hear what I'm saying? You don't have to walk around a wimp. You don't have to walk around in disbelief. You may not be packing. Somebody said, Pastor, don't look at me. Please don't look. Don't call my name. We may not be buffed. But the resurrection power is all that we need. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. I mean, go to the gym, but remember, you need a little something, something. More than what the gym can give you. You need resurrection power. We need resurrection power. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Finally, when Christ rose from the dead, we were forgiven. And not only were we forgiven, but we were justified. And that word justification means that when God sees you and sees me, he doesn't see our sins. Somebody need to tell the Lord, thank you for that. You know where you have been. You know what you have done. You know what your life has been like. Amen. You know what your life has been like. But you're justified by your faith in Jesus Christ. So God no longer sees you. He sees his son, Jesus Christ. He sees the blood of Jesus covering you. It has blotted out your transgression. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So those are the benefits I just wanted to share with you today. The benefits of the resurrection. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Somebody say thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Won't you stand now? We sing this song called The Blessing. We call it The Blessing. We want to sing it over you before you go. Accept it as a benediction. Accept it as a blessing. Let me just pray for you first. And then we're going to sing this song. Father, in your name, I want to give you thanks and praise. I want to thank you, Lord God, for this great, great day. As Christians, this is what gives validity to our Christian faith. Our Lord and our Savior died and rose again. Others who proclaim to be the Christ, their tomb contained their bones. But Lord Jesus, you have left the evidence of an empty tomb. Hallelujah. You have risen just as you said you would. And we thank you for all these benefits that we now have through your death, burial, and resurrection. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Praise God. We're going to sing this song for you. Uh, the blessing. Won't you come a little closer? Amen. 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 I want to impart this blessing to you as you go with God. Don't leave without the blessings of this song. The Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace can everyone just lift their hands and receive the blessing the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace
praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What, what, a, what an appropriate message for today. I trust that your perception of this day, the most important day for us as born-again believers, this day gives meaning to our faith. And I pray that you have been blessed on today by today's message. Listen, death cannot hold you down. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday or our next broadcast. Remember, please consider sending a, a love gift, a tithe, an offering to us here at Spring of Water Christian Assembly. We're, we're reaching you in your home, wherever you are, and we'd just like for you consider now to be a blessing to us. Go to Cash App, Cash App, and put in Spring of Water Christian Assembly or put in 781-709. 6205 and that phone number will identify us or you may go to our website springofwater.org and click on giving giving or donation god bless you and thank you and we look forward to seeing you at our next broadcast happy resurrection day shout praise the lord we hope you'll worship with us again next week right here on live stream at 10 a.m spring of water changing lives for the better.